Thank you for listening to this module. My name is Nancy Santesso from the Graves Center at McMaster University, and I will present this module over the next 10 minutes about writing and understanding strong and weak recommendations in the grade approach. This module is meant for guideline developers and for anyone using guideline recommendations. In another module about making recommendations, we covered all of the factors that guideline panels consider when making recommendations, such as the priority of the problem, benefits and harms, the certainty of the evidence, values and preference, and other issues. We showed how guideline panels can use the evidence to decision table shown here to review the evidence for each of the factors and make recommendations. Here we have provided two examples of a recommendation. The guideline panel recommend intranasal glucocorticosteroids for treatment of allergic rhinitis in adults, and it is a strong recommendation based on high quality evidence. And they also suggest intranasal glucocorticosteroids in children with allergic rhinitis, which is a conditional recommendation based on moderate quality evidence. We will explain how panels decided on a conditional or strong recommendation and what it means to healthcare providers in this module. Grade recommendations are written and developed using two classifications, the direction and the strength. Direction is about whether the recommendation is for or against an option, so to do it or not do it, and the strength is either strong or weak, or often termed conditional. In this way, recommendations can be either strong recommendation for an option, a strong recommendation against an option, a conditional recommendation for an option, or a conditional recommendation against an option. One way to think about the different types of recommendations is to picture a balancing scale where the guideline panel considers all of the factors, such as the benefits and harms and values, acceptability, etc., and then how the scale can tip from one side for something or to the other side against something. consider a hypothetical example where we consider whether to recommend drug A to treat the common cold or not. The panel would consider all of the factors such as benefits and harms, such as reducing how long a cold lasts, or harms such as other side effects, the burden of taking the drug, the effect on equity, and how much people value the outcomes, and the costs. In this example, more factors clearly favor recommending drug A. There is high quality evidence or certainty in that evidence of the benefits outweighing the harms, about the low cost, about the acceptability to people, and so the recommendation is for the option and it is a strong recommendation. This means that all or almost all people would want drug A and clinicians should just do it, prescribe the drug. Let's consider this next example. In this example, some factors favor recommending drug A, but there are some factors that do not favor drug A. In these cases, the benefits may slightly outweigh the harms, there is some nausea in this case, or the evidence is not so certain about the evidence about the benefits and harms, there's low certainty in the evidence, Maybe it's not clear whether people would value reducing the time they have a cold by 10 hours if there is this risk of nausea, so patient values and preferences may be variable. So in this case, the balance is still for the drug, but the recommendation is weak or conditional on certain circumstances. This means that most patients, but not all, will want the drug, and clinicians will need to consider the conditions under which to recommend the drug and likely they will need to share the decision with patients. In this next example, the factors clearly favor not recommending drug A. Patients would agree that the harms, such as nausea, outweigh the benefits, which there is no effect on symptoms. And we are certain of this, there is high certainty in the evidence. The drug has a high cost, a high burden with the injections, and recommending the drug would increase inequities. So in this case, it's on the side of against, and it is a strong recommendation against using the drug. This means that almost all patients would not want drug A, 
and clinicians should not do it or not prescribe it. So let's think about this example. Most factors favor not recommending drug A, but there are some factors that do favor drug A. Perhaps the harm, such as nausea, may slightly outweigh the benefits, which is the reduction in how long the cold lasts, or the evidence is not so certain about those benefits and harms, so there is low certainty in that evidence, and maybe it is not clear whether people would want to avoid nausea or avoid injections, but prefer instead to reduce how long a cold lasts. The drug is also moderately expensive, but there would be no effect on inequities. In this case, the balance is on the side of not recommending, but not to the extreme of a strong recommendation. So the recommendation is weak or conditional and it is due to certain circumstances. This means that most patients, but not all, will not want the drug and clinicians will need to consider the conditions under which to not recommend the drug and again will likely need to share the decision with their patients. These scenarios which I have illustrated do not cover all the reasons for a strong or weak recommendation. In general though, we find most recommendations are strong when we are certain about the effects we found, the high certainty, and most recommendations are weak when there is less certainty in the effects we found. However, we hope that we have shown that in our examples, there are many factors other than quality of evidence that are considered when making decisions. And again, the recommendations should be based on all of the factors, not just the certainty of the evidence. There are also unique circumstances when strong recommendations could be based on evidence for which we have low certainty. For example, there are some medications during pregnancy when the benefits are certain and we have high certainty in those benefits, but there is a potential for a serious risk. We may not be certain in the evidence for the serious risk, but there is this potential. In such a case, the panel may provide a strong recommendation against the option despite the uncertainty in the evidence. There are also unique circumstances when weak recommendations could be based on evidence for which we have high certainty. For example, drugs to treat allergies. The benefits and harms are similar between options and we are certain about it. But patients may value the benefits and harms differently and they may have to pay for the option. In such a case, the panel may provide a weak conditional recommendation to provide the drugs where this decision may be conditional on patient preferences. In summary, grade recommendations are written as strong or weak recommendations for or against an option. Deciding on the strength and the direction depends on a variety of factors, not just the level of evidence. And we hope that this module will be helpful for guideline developers and guideline users to understand how the strength of recommendation was decided and what it means when applying these recommendations. We have additional information about how to interpret strong and weak recommendations. You can spend some time to review these implications, but we will not go into details about this here. You can also find more information about the interpretation of strong and weak recommendations in the publications at the GRADE Working Group website. You will also find information in the articles listed here.